reorient ourselves back for our final discussion of the day and of the last two days. We had just completed before lunch, so I'm sure none of you actually remember the half hour leading up to lunch, because that's what lunch should worry about its lowest. Um, but we had conducted dialogue circles to look to questions of individual or sort of locally based innovation. Right? Whether at uh, the personal level, we often heard, but also about how organizations work and organizations want to as well. So for the next, let's call it a half hour or so, um, again with the goal of getting everybody out of here by three, we want to have a plenary session here, a plenary discussion that is similar to a dialogue circle, but of course we're not going to make you sit in the diet circle and all the tables around. But we want to hear from people about what we, in the royal collective sense, can do. How can we innovate? Coming out of now almost two full days of discussions, of presentations on a whole range of, of issues, ideas, practices, experiences, hearing about sort of what people are living, what their lived experiences and places are. What can we, moving forward, both in terms of the group that is in this room, but also the broader we that reflects sort of the, the constituents, right, the organizations that we reflect. So it's not just the we of Lars Hallstrom and the ACSRC, but also the we in terms of, for example, the University of Alberta. I can't speak on behalf of the University of Alberta, but I do represent it. University of Alberta. They don't do what I say very often, but I can try. Continue to try. So, how might we, both in terms of this space and this collective, move forward and innovate? Do we, in fact, need to do so? We've talked about values, we've talked about value change, we've talked about behavioral change, but we've also talked about stasis and stability. Um, to use some of our term, we've talked about attractors talked about drivers and drivers of change, but also those things that reinforce stability, like institutions. Institutions have this dynamic, institutional inertia, by design, they're hard to change. They're actually created to be hard to change. Right. So what I'd like to do is start, first of all, asking if there are any volunteers. If they aren't, I'm just going to pick somebody at random. Yeah. Might be Margo. Uh. <laughs> So where do we begin? Volunteers. <coughs> These are not obligations, you're not committing to anything. <laughs> Ten if you want to. Yes. Sorry, please introduce yourself to the rest of the group. I'm Susan Ryan from the University of Calgary, Calgary Wellness, broke at the camp. The group that was in that, that half have already heard the suggestion, but uh, invite each other to our activities. The Milk River um, group invites people to their flowing Milk River, the road that people did that a few years ago. I think I haven't made it to one of those yet, but one of these days I So I'm thinking of inviting, I'm trying to get the River Valley Committee to invite this group, and then even just a, if just a few people come, then we Excellent starting point. Another suggestion, another idea. Stunned silence. What did you have for lunch? <laughs> Was it good? <laughs> Reg? Well, I, I was saying earlier, I think being able to get some case studies. Uh, some case studies. I mean, I love the thought of getting pieces from these presentations. And it's sometimes really hard to see just how we can adapt some of these experiences. I mean, some of it's, you know, like the food, the watershed reporting and all that. But getting to understand the methodologies that went into that, like the work in Manitoba, and um, to understand how exactly methodologically they went through it, maybe some idea of the costing of doing some of these pieces. So it would be really great to get, I don't know, through some <laughs> student-based um, research, just taking the cases that are here. And being able to say, okay, look at looking at the templates that you or the, the filters that we looked at in the last two days from a policy standpoint, from innovation, from the 
integration. Where do you feel you've made some progress? And where do you feel you need some guidance? Two questions. Where you've made progress, where you could use some guidance. And Rich, are you proposing mm -hmm. this is something that you would do? I would love to be able to do. I would be, I'd be willing, if, I, if it came to me in the form of a yeah. monkey, what do you call it, Mr. Monkey, monkey. Survey Monkey Questionnaire that was well designed, and you could offer that insight in a fairly rapid fire, dedicated couple hours, I think we could all do that on our own projects. You just ballpark, you know, this costs 10,000, well, this costs actually 50, you know, not being able to just give people a sense of, <clears throat> of what it would take to go forward with some of these things. So as a direct follow-up on this, I'd volunteer to do a little piece on there. Somebody, one of your wonderful academic student types that would be willing to put that survey together. Or we could co-help, co-design that. Any thoughts or responses to either the first two suggestions? Well, I, I, I like that. I like the both. And I, I like both of the suggestions. And um, I don't want to overtax your organization, but it would be, um, I don't know if it's possible to to up, make it easy for us to see the papers as kind of being generated or even do a blog every once in a while, just commenting from from kind of control central or where you see things going? Because I was distracted, yep. I love having fingers pointed. <laughs> uh, I have to admit, yeah, the, the, the blogging thing was not good. But a Facebook group. Facebook group? It's a group. We oh, have a oh, Facebook page, yeah. center. You're all welcome to join. We do tweet. Oh, okay. Yeah. By we, I mean, the water table is a water table, I don't know how to speak. I've never done anything on the board, so you can't trust my life. It was on that beer, right? I have a response. Oh, great. Right. This section. Um, so I. I guess that you could reintroduce yourself. Oh, sorry. I'm um, sorry. I'm 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 sorry. i five times a year newsletter and we always have an article that features some sort of um, stewardship initiative that sort of draws the arc from the issue, uh, the strategies used to overcome it and the partnering that happens and then kind of like the outcome and next steps that's happening with that group. We try to focus on that. So I mean, it, that could potentially, if it's not a new system or anything, but if there are stories that need to so Michelle, can I just clarify a little bit? Um, when you normally do those, is that something that your um, organization does a little bit of research, profiles a story, and puts it as part of your news newsletter? Basically, yeah. So she's the researcher. <laughs> well, I mean, it's all anecdotal. Sure. But it's, it's, we find that there's a lot of need people often ask us, or they say to us, we don't know how to manage thing X, and then because we're a provincial organization, and that issue may be in southern Alberta and already been dealt with, and so, so if we're able to share that story, oftentimes other other groups become aware of strategies they maybe wouldn't have been yeah. And are you aware of. open to those profiles coming from outside of Alberta? Um, yeah, we try to focus on community-based yep. work, but, um, and, and it is, my program is the Alberta Stewardship Network, so it is an Alberta focus, but so we wouldn't want to overtake it with every, with from everywhere, but occasionally to have something from outside of Alberta would be fine because you obviously learn from there. Great. So as a quick follow-up question for those Albertans in the room, how many of you are receiving, have received, or have seen said newsletters? Go sign up. <laughs> so there would appear to be both a need and um, <laughs> supply. It's called the. I, okay. It's the Alberta Stewardship Network Grassroots Newsletter. So um, if you give me your name, I mean, I can make a list. You can put your email address and I'll add you to the list if you want, and you'll get it. And I get that it's five times a year. It's not, you won't get spam or anything. So it's that's only one of the articles. Usually there's about five articles, but one of them is always a, we call it the Stewardship Showcase. So let me know if you want to do anything. And or if you have a story. There's these cool postcards that Michelle has, so if you haven't got one, about the stewardship directory, which is kind of neat. Just a little bit of that free advertising there. <laughs>
Will you write your email address down? You can pick up where it was. You can charge me later. Oh, great. The Atlantis Network does some of this kind of stuff as well. Both of us probably have that role serving as a library uh, or for future search, so that, that's another aspect of both organizations here to help in the future realm. It, it's not so much just the immediacy that's important, but maybe we'll get back to it in the future. So another aspect of this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If I can ask a follow oh, sorry, we have a I think something that we can do is um, stop trying to do everything. I think too many groups uh, work at the wrong scale and um, don't always have the expertise to solve the big problems they're trying to solve. And so maybe um, a better strategy is to kind of work along the spectrum of skills and focus so that there's kind of a multilateral approach to a problem um, but then, uh, that there's, there's, a, there's still a lot of competition for the resources. That's, that's a fact that is out there. There aren't enough resources. There's not enough people, there's not enough money, there's not enough time. And so um, it's that stop what you're doing for a minute, take a really good look at what, you, what your, your strengths are, what your advantage is, um, and who else you need to have with you to kind of get the problem solved. We look at integration that way, not um, what piece are you of the solution, not to consider yourself the solution. Is that we have to stop, we have to start thinking that way a little bit. I don't know why I keep looking at you. Look at that again. Sure, tip off. Margo? Sure. I, I just have to add this. Uh, one of my favorite Australian um, poets and cartoonists has this great saying of what is worth doing and what is worth having. It's worth doing nothing and having a rest. <laughs> <laughs> but I think your point there is actually, uh, I should have said this closing remarks, but um, uh, I think it is actually a really important uh, point that it's very easy with people that are really doing an enormous amount already to make a sense that there is always more to be done rather than consolidating what is already being done and actually just, you know, going back. So I would just sort of add that into the mix that it's it's actually one of the things that we can do is just um, collectively just let some of the ideas sink in and see what does naturally bubble up without feeling that there has to be a million next steps. That's a general question. Thank you, Margaret.